I look at NFTs as like venture capital. Mm. 90% right? fail rate. Gary V is a, a big proponent of it, but he also lets you know, yo, 95 plus percent of them are going to fail, mm -hmm. right? Maybe 99%, but like at the end of the day, if you get one right and you got 10 wrong, well, that one right will not only outweigh all the other nine you got wrong, but it's going to make up for a lot more. So like you want to just do a lot of work and understanding what it is, understanding technology, and that will help you say, you know what? I, I might be comfortable buying that. Pull up in the drive light. I didn't mix my look with Fago. Stack my money up like Lego. Lego. What's up, everybody? You are now tuned in to another episode of Money Music Culture. I'm with my dog, Ross Mack, and you rocking the Black Wealth Matters tea, man. Tell them where we can get that, brother. Tell them where we can get that. Oh, man, look, you already know. Look, Black Wealth Matters is very important to me because at the end of the day, right, black lives, in order for us to matter, we got to get our bread up, right? Black wealth has to matter, and I truly believe that. And uh, you can get it at maconomics.com. Maconomics.com, mm. man. Uh, we'll spell it, but I always misspell it, but that's M A C O N. O M I C S. Ooh. Maconomics. The pressure was on. I'm not going to lie. If you would have misspelled that right then and there, that would have been rough. Brother. Hey, you know how it be, man. Hey. You know how it be. But let's let's talk about something that's uh, life changing. Ooh, life changing. Right. Well, I got a question for you. We're we going to talk about that because uh, uh, all these acronyms been been thrown around, right? BWM, Black Wealth Matters. You know what I'm saying? You got AOL, American <laughs> Online, and all of that. You know? But. Everybody keep talking about these NFTs, bro. And I'm going to be honest with you. I know, yeah. you know, people look, oh, he's a professor. He he knows this stuff. He's a yada, yada, yada. He, he talks about money. I, I, I do, but I'm also smart enough to know when I don't know enough, right? So yeah. you're going to have to kick game to me on the NFTs because I see you in your NFT bag. I see you. You know what you're talking about. But but we, we're going to have to start at the beginning, the minor leagues, right? First and yeah. foremost, what the hell is an NFT? All right, before we keep the conversation going, I need you to follow Money Music Culture on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And make sure you subscribe on our YouTube channel. With your support, we can keep this journey going. Yeah, look, I know you didn't heard it, right? Yo, even your grandma and your auntie was talking about this at Christmas dinner table, or better yet, at... at uh, at Easter or something, right? Because everybody was trying to figure out what it is, right? So NFT stands for non-fungible token. So what a non-fungible token is, it shows a unique ownership of something, right? Um, on the blockchain, right? Therefore, you can't duplicate it, you can't replicate it. But first, let's even talk about what fungible is. If we were to dissect the word non-fungible token, right? So fungible, for something to be fungible is this, right? You have two $5 bills, I have a 10 we both have $10. Therefore, that is fungible. It don't matter where you at. We both have $10. You have, you, you got two fives. I got one 10 and somebody else got, you know, 10 ones. We all got $10. Therefore, it's fungible. It's interchangeable. We all have the value of 10. However, you know, the one and only the master recording of Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. There's only one master recording of it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that right there is the unique one of one. Right. So put it like this. We all can have the MP3 song of Billy Jean on our phone. But in order to actually own the master. Right. That right there is the the digital NFT of it. Right. So right now a painter. Right. Can literally paint a portrait. Y'all know how long it take a painter to paint a, a big masterpiece. Right. And then after that. Right. There's only one time he only painted one painting in life. Right. After it, the person might be able to sell some prints of it. Right. But the actual one painting that he or she painted originally is the NFT. So what it is really showing you is the one of one of something. Right. And mm. so, you know, I think. So does that make sense? So I just want to make sure. So fungible, when you're talking about the ten dollar example, the fact that you that I have ten dollars or or if I have this hat and you have this hat, then it's fungible. But non-fungible would mean that it's one of one. Is that kind of how you would break it down? It is the uniqueness of it. It is the master recording of something, right? And so I think we all get kind of bottled down thinking about, you know, NFTs in the realm of a picture, right? Like, oh, man, what the hell is this monkey why is this monkey worth something? What the hell is an NFT or what is this, you know, ape or what is this kitty, a crypto kitty, right? And I think people need to understand that NFTs 
is something beyond a picture. What it is doing is showing you ownership, verifiable ownership that lives on the blockchain, right? Blockchain itself, that's a whole nother episode. But what it is, it is a network of computers that allows people, you know, to verify ownership through a series of different, you know, computer things they're doing. Exactly. Right. As a it, blockchain is showing you ledgers. Right. And then the, it, at the end of the day, right, the different transactions, et cetera, is able to show you who owns what, who bought, who sold it, but not the actual identity. But it's able to verify everything. And so the reason NFTs are dope is because, you know, back in the day. Right. I'm an artist. Right. I'm a musician. We'll say it that way. I'm a musician and I'm trying to buy my my masters back from Def Jam or something. Right. Well, one is, you know, the, the easier way is to say, yo, I, I recorded this song. Here's the NFT of it. And then I can actually sell out those NFTs. Right. Mm. But the NFT itself, it doesn't just have to be one. Right. That's you can you can sell, you know, hundreds of thousands of it. But the uniqueness of it is like this is the one of one. This is the two. This is the second iteration of the one of one, the third one. Right. And you could sell hundreds of thousands of them. But the thing that just makes it so dope is that it, 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 it is, you know, a community. Right. And, and I, I had a uh, example one time because people don't understand, like at the end of the day, we all have bought an NFT. It just isn't called that yet. Right. And so mm-hmm. one thing because of COVID, it really sped up technology and made it move faster. Here's a great example of an NFT. Right. All of us have gone either to a concert or to a sporting event recently. Guess what? When you get there, guess what? Everything, everything is touchless meaning there are no physical tickets anymore well guess what when you bought that ticket to that game or to that concert right um if we want to go see cope lose again right we <laughs> bought that ticket <laughs> we bought the ticket but guess what it went to our phone therefore technically we walk into the stadium they they beep our phone guess what that is technically an nft we have a one of one that represents the ability to ownership of this seat right Mm. i don't own it for life but i own this seat right there was a tangible value that came with me technically purchasing this nft and that's the thing right i want to say when you look at you know how technology went this most recent super bowl right they sold the tickets as nfts or you bought the ticket and the ticket itself was able to be nfts that way it helps people with counterfeiting right everybody went to a sport game with somebody's standing out front you know, scalping tickets. Well, how can you tell if it's real? You don't really know if it's real until you get up there and and they beep and then you go back and they say, sir, ma'am, this is counterfeit. <laughs> and then you're trying to find the guy that sold it and he halfway Gone. on his way back to his crib with your money, right? But the idea is like it's unique. It is showing you the ownership. So think about that, right? A, 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 a digital, because, you know, people look at, you know, NFTs as just digital art. I'm showing you it is digital ownership, right? Mm. And what it is doing is showing you verifiably right that i own this unique ability whether to sit here or the unique ability to own this picture or the unique ability and there's a lot of things but i'm gonna stop there before i keep going because i got a lot of examples of no i I want to make sure that makes sense yeah no this is good so i want to just kind of confirm my thought process here so like you were saying so if i'm a painter i paint this beautiful masterpiece but i say you know what i got time i'm gonna paint two of them right now, they're the exact same thing. Can I? Can that NFT be one of two and two of two, so to speak? Or does it need to be literally one, like the masters of, like one ticket, one seat, one masters I mean, or one song? At, or- the, at the end of the day, right, if I'm painting a painting and I paint a, sep- a second painting, those are two separate paintings. I don't care if it's the exact same thing. It's, sep- it's still separate, two separate paintings, right? I can record a song and then record a remix. Those are still two different songs, right? And I do get what you're saying, right? Is it a one-on-one or one or two? What the NFT is showing you, here's a good example, Like right? cars. That's what I'm thinking of. It's like cars. Like you got like, there's only 16 of these cars in the world or X of these paintings in the world or whatever, right? So I'm, or even can trading you NFT cards, that, right? so to speak? You can NFT anything because what it is, it is a, it is a, you're making effectively look at it like saying, so all right, let's, let's, let's put it in a, a easier example, right? Yeah. When we were growing up, we had Pokemon cards and trading cards, right? You had a Michael Jordan. If you had a, you know, a junior Seau, a, a Ray Lewis, 
You had six Jordan cards? Six Jordans. I still got them. Six MJs. Yeah. Bro, I got one MJ, and I went and I Googled it. They told me it wasn't worth nothing. I was That's what so I'm saying. Mad, I'm like, how? How? How, I Sway? I was so how? mad. I was oh, mad. Oh, my bro. God. I was so mad. I'm like, yo, I went through it. I found it because somehow all my Pokemon cards got thrown away. That's a whole uh, other story. Yeah. But moms was able to keep track of my, uh, my, my playing cards, bro. <laughs> I was mad as hell. But... That being said, so think about it, right? Think of the process it takes to, to one, sell that. So now, suppose only a thousand Michael Jordan rookie year cards of him fading away, tongue out, da, 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 right? Now let's think of the process it takes to actually verify that this is a real card, right? That it's not counterfeit. Then let's think of the process it takes to actually say, you know what? This is in mint condition. They're, the sides are not bent. Um, it was never, uh, you know what I mean? Like there's no mm -hmm. wear and tear. Those are extremely hard processes, right? However, the NFT, so now imagine that there were only a hundred digital cards. Now what makes that process easier is one, you can't counterfeit it because it lives on the blockchain. Once again, a blockchain network of computers that, um, you can't counterfeit. The reason being is because it is open source. Everybody has the ability, right, to effectively, it's run by, you know, hundreds and thousands of different computers that are all verifying this data that lives on this network, right? Mm -hmm. So if we all own, you know, one of these Michael Jordan rookie cards on the blockchain, then guess what? Five years down the line, 10 years down the line, it's an easier way, one, to trade the card, right? Because, I don't need it in my possession. I own it digitally, right? And that's the the easiest way I can try to explain that. Let me know if that helps. No, that that definitely helps. And and I, I what what you're doing is verifying that this thing is real, almost. This is like this is the real deal. This ain't no fake. This ain't no counterfeit. This is either I'm purchasing it for ownership to show that this is mine and I got it and it's one of one or. I can also like the use case. I think that's what, you know, people always talk about utility, 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 right? The use case is being able to, to one, show people, Hey, this is mine and I own it. Or also being able to, uh, use it in, like you said, like a concert situation or showing up to a game, right? Verifying that this isn't counterfeit, which is dope. So, so yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so the biggest thing, right? And NFT sometimes gets slander. Sometimes people love it because at the end of the day, NFTs, when they first came out, everybody was rushing. Oh, I got to buy an NFT. I got to buy an NFT. And at the end of the day, a lot of the NFTs that were sold for a lot of money just dove down in all their value, right? To give you an idea, the very first tweet by Jack mm. Dorsey, right? Mm. The person that started Twitter. He was like, you know what? I'm going to sell my very first tweet. I'm going to mint it. Right. Minting is the process of converting something. It's physical or, you know, digital form or whatever, but they mint it and actually put it on the blockchain. Right. Uh -huh. AKA converting and making an NFT. So he's like, yo, I'm going to sell my NFT and I don't eat because he rich. He probably gave it away to charity, but he sold it for like damn near two, three million dollars. Right. Yep. Two point eight million. Yeah, two point eight million. Right. And guess what? Not that long ago, one of the people who bought it tried to list it, right? He tried to sell it in the auction. The highest bid he got was for $10,000. Mm. So imagine buying something for $2.8 million, and that now is only worth $10,000, right? One, right, the, the popularity of NFTs died down quickly, right? Uh, people weren't checking for it as much, right? They're like, oh, yeah, that was a scam, bro. I don't want that, right? And so I always tell you, the use case is important, right? So... You know, right now, I got a painting behind me, right? Who's to say somebody wants to buy it from me, right? It's original artwork, right? But who's to say somebody wants to buy it from me? So at the end of the day, you know, beauty as well as art sometimes is always in the eyes of the beholder. And so one thing I always like to say is, is there a use case for it? And I could give you a perfect use case, right? Mm -hmm. Because here's one, right? Copeland, suppose you sack... Um, Brett Favre, Tom Brady, it don't matter. Obviously, you ain't played with Brett Favre, but you is old enough to have you old. <laughs> Co old, by the way, y'all. In like football years, he like Actually, 90. Did I play with Brett? Uh, <laughs> nah, Brett was, Brett was. I'm like, hold up, did I? Hey, bro, because you know he did play with the Vikings. He, he kept coming yeah. back for a little bit. But I uh, say that to say, so Pope. Nah, I, ah. I missed him by two years, three years. Ah. So that being said, right, imagine Copeland sacks somebody, right? Now, 
back in the day, it could be a, a Top Shot card of it, right? But instead, Top Shot is saying, look, it don't got to just be a steel image. It can be the whole, uh, you know, five seconds, the entire play. And guess what? We can mint that. Right, I just saw Top Shot, and we saw right LeBron James dunk on somebody. Everybody used the cert, the word like, "Oh, that's the poster!" Right, sign the poster. Right, the entire idea is like, it's such a crazy highlight. We're gonna freeze frame it and make a poster of it. Now NFTs allow you to make a a a, a whole moment of it. It don't gotta just be a picture. It could be the whole play. And so Top Shot started, you know, minting people getting dunked on. Steph Curry hitting threes. Right when Steph Curry broke, um. Ray Allen's three-point record, right? They made, and it was like 3,000 threes or something or whatever the exact number was. They made an NFT of every three-pointer we ever hit, right? I just saw not that long ago um, Magic Johnson, right? He's making, he's he's partnering up with Top Shot where they're going to make NFTs of it, right? And even if you still saying, yo, would I own a rookie card of Steph Curry, right? Um, I don't know, right? But I could also talk to you about use cases because imagine buying a NFT, right? Uh, because the way I look at NFTs is like down the line, it's going to have way more use cases. It's just like an arbitrary, um, my arbitrary idea of what I value this picture or this highlight of, gotcha. right? So, you know, there's so many different ways of saying the technology of putting something on the blockchain, making it verifiable, right? There's a, an Italian car, right? There's an Italian car that comes with an NFT now. Alfa Romeo. Mm -hmm. Google it right now. Alfa Romeo. They're getting ready to start selling the car that comes with an NFT. Now, what makes this use case different is because you know what? This NFT tracks everything of the car, right? The mileage, how many times the car itself got serviced. Bad. So now this NFT isn't like, oh, this is a piece of work of art. It's like, no, you know what? It's actually making sure the owner of this car, right? The owner, because you look at the car as a work of art, right? The actual owner of this car is keeping a car, right? AKA similar to a trading card, keeping it in mint condition, mint condition. Nice. right? Yeah. I remember lan laminating cards and stuff, thinking mm -hmm. this this holographic Blastoise card or Charizard or whatever going to be worth something. But now the NFT of the vehicle is going to now let you know if this car was kept in mint condition. And so I really look at NFTs as saying right now it started off as artwork, but I think down the line it's going to continue to to grow and Excuse become me. an entire world of its own. It's it's beautiful because I think that the world is obviously innovating and it makes sense when you put it the way that you do, right? Um, I guess my next question would be how would you suggest people who are interested in nfts like navigate this market right like so dude just bought jack dorsey's tweet i'm sure in his mind he thought that was a surefire idea in my mind i'm like well i got the screenshot too so like i don't yes. really give a damn like yeah you could put it up on your wall but i'm gonna put it up on mine too if i want i mean i wouldn't put up his tweet because i don't really give a shit, but you get what i'm saying yeah. you know what i'm saying but so it's like what what are there any suggestions or strategies or any things that you're thinking about let's let's, let's just take it Forget advice for other people. What are you thinking about as you navigate this world? Because if somebody is smart, then I'm sure that they could emulate the great Ross Mack. Yeah, so at the end of the day, as with any type of investment, be skeptical, right? Um, that's part of the whole due diligence process. I'm not buying a new stock just because, you know, other people are tweeting about it or uh, posting on, on social media, right? At the end of the day, I want to do the due diligence. And I think when it comes to NFTs, the entire marketplace is down, right? If we talk about the height of NFTs was at the end of 2021, right? And that's when it was crazy, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands, like 200,000 or so um, NFTs were being traded daily, you know, fast forward to today, you know, it might be less than 20,000 being traded daily. And so, you know, at the end of the day, Hold every... On. Say that one more time. Sorry, I, I might have missed them. So... Go ahead. So the... I'll tell you right now, the 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 amount of NFTs, you know, the, the amount of NFTs traded is down over 90%. Okay. Gotcha. I'll say it like that. Since I think it's like 2021, 2000, and then today it's like less than 20,000 or something. So I was like, Hold no, no, no. The, yeah. year the end of 2021 was when NFTs hit its stride. 
Okay. And what I'm saying, since the peak of NFTs, right, when everybody was talking about it, everybody was mentioning it, Bored Apes, this, that, 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 LeBron, NFT, Top Shot, NFT, yada, yada. The, 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 the traction of it now is down over 90%, right? Gotcha. People searching, you know, OpenSea, et cetera, that's down over 90%. And so they are slowly dying down, but they will never die out. And the reason I say they'll never die out is because the technology is on the next level, right? And I look at it as saying, okay, how, and I always say this, right? And your brother, he's a GOAT because he always say that whether it's NFTs or crypto, what is the use case? Right. And the use case for me is saying, OK, I might not understand a picture of something. Right. Just like you said, yo, why would I want a Jack Dorsey tweet? I, I can't see me owning a Jack Dorsey tweet. Right. But, hey, maybe the uh, owning a Bored Apes, right, a Bored Apes Yacht Club is the most valuable NFT as it stands today. Right. But what comes with that is not just a picture. It's an entire status symbol. I get to go to private, you know, parties, private events, this, that and the third. That might be something you're interested in. Right. Um, but for me, I'm looking at it and saying, okay, what's next? Because, um, and if the technology of it will allow us to now take very complicated contracts and make them NFTs. And I mm -hmm. look at that and saying, okay, how do we simplify life? Because at the end of the day, technological advances are always going to continue to come, right? When we never thought, you know, 20 years ago or 10 years ago, five years ago, nobody thought you would truly be dating, you know, virtually, Right. People probably having dates in the metaverse. Right. People didn't think we'll be swiping on Tinder to meet a date. Right. But like at the end of the day, um, that's just how it is. And so now when you look at what NFTs will in, end up growing to, they will just be finding ways to put contracts onto the blockchain. That way it's easier to to understand, easier to trade or buy and sell certain things. Right. Like I, I talk about it all the time, like um the process of buying a home is very tedious, right? Mm. Title transfers, who owns the deed, you're signing this, you're signing that, they lawyer reviewing this, that. But if it was all on the on the blockchain, it might be an easier process. Mm. Um, so for me, I think when it comes to investing in it, it is always a hit or miss because what you're really banking on is that the community that is representing a picture is like, yo, I wanna buy this picture from you, right? And the same with art on my wall, right? It's very hard to sell a, a piece of art, but if it's unique, if it's something that you believe in the artist, you know, then I think you might be able to say five years down the line, it might be worth something. But um, that that's just kind of how I look it's at subjective. it. Subjective, subjective. And man, I know the art good is always times. subjective. I know the good times painting when I see it, brother. Talking about original one on one, but that's good times, bro. I've seen that junk before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, man. But like. It, it, it sounds like it's one of those things to keep your eye on. Um, obviously, if you see an opportunity or find an opportunity, it's something that you want to vet thoroughly. But like you said, 90% of these things have failed. So it's going to be here, but Yeah, so cautiously. I look at NFTs really. So I look at NFTs as like venture capital. 90% mm, right? fail rate. And Gary V, Gary V is a, a big proponent of it, but he also lets you know, yo, 95 plus percent of them are going to fail, mm -hmm. right? Maybe 99%, but like at the end of the day, if you get one right and you got 10 wrong, well, that one right will not only outweigh all the other nine you got wrong, but it's going to make up for a lot more. So like, yeah. that's how you can look at it, right? Like right now the market is down, you might be able to get in for the low, right? That's, that's, you know, it's harder to conceptualize sometimes, but shoot the stock market down, the crypto market down. At the end of the day, we like buying assets at a discount. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think when it comes to trading NFTs, I think you want to just do a lot of work and understanding what it is, understanding the technology, and that will help you say, you know what, I, I might be comfortable buying that. Mm. Big facts, big facts, big facts. Well... I appreciate the lesson, my brother. I appreciate the lesson. I think one of the things that Gary V also mentioned is, like you said, 95% of these companies are going to fail, right? Like, you look at the Apples, the Amazons, and all these other companies, and, like, there were other companies competing with those companies to have that brand household name, right? And and so don't necessarily be dismayed by that. It's, it's like you said, do your best. If you're going to play in the space, if you're going to invest in the space, do your best to find and pick the winner, so to speak. Um, last thing, I guess, you know, in, in as quick of an answer as you possibly could, do you believe that NFTs are something in a space that you should definitely be 
looking into for the future? Or do you think, hey, let's go ahead and focus, like how much of your time are you focused on NFTs versus the, the things that you know, see and feel today? I, I mean, at the end of the day, NFTs is just a technological advance. It allows you to show digital ownership of something, right? Whether it's contracts, whether it's pictures, whether it's, you know, the Carfax of a vehicle, right? Um, but I think you should know about it. Not necessarily saying put your money in it, but make sure you do your due diligence. Say no more. All right, man. Well, as we do, man, money, music, culture, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend what ross says so ross tell him how you tell him man oh you already know man this is another episode of money music culture make sure you tell a kid that beat up on you in second grade you know what i mean next make sure you tell a fourth grade kid who digged in his digged in his nose and touched your books and you got in trouble because you said oh we got the cooties but look at the end of the day tell your auntie your cousin as well as your second cousin that you thought at the family reunion you liked till you found out y'all was actually related but nonetheless another episode of money music culture let's get to it let's get it